Bartoni Arms. Today we're going to do a video on how to remake your ballistic gel after you shot it. You've, and we got a block here that we used uh, last weekend on the uh, 762 versus the 300 blackout. And what we're going to do is we're going to prepare it and remake it, remold it, ready for the next use. So the first thing you do, really easy, you just take your uh, ballistic gel and you use cold water and you just rinse it off. You get all the debris, dirt, um, any kind of debris that was left on the gel. I like to cut it up in smaller pieces. It makes it easier for um, when you're melting it down, it, it makes it easier. It melts a little bit quicker. Real easy here, you just rinse it, nothing special. Now, if you have metal fragments in your gel left from um, ballistic testing, get as much out as you can, but don't really focus on that. It's not really a big deal. Um, the reason I say that is when you melt it, the uh, any uh, of the bullet will will settle down to the very bottom. As you're pouring it into your mold, you can actually uh, it'll actually stay in the bottom of the pan, and uh, then you can recover it. So it's not really an issue. Total time to do this is I mean it really depends on you. It don't have to be super super clean. Obviously the cleaner the better, but um, you don't have to spend a, a whole lot of time on it. So it really shouldn't take you maybe five minutes or so. So I'm going to go ahead and uh, get the rest of this cleaned up. And uh, I'm going to do it off camera so you know what to do. I'll try to save the video link. Um, but uh, I'll go ahead and finish doing this and uh, we'll see here in just a minute. Alright, we have our uh, gel all cleaned and uh, cut up and in our pot. Now we're ready to melt it back down to a liquid. Now at this point, if you want to skip through the video, I prefer you watch it, but if you don't want to, the process is pretty much the same. You just heat it up in hot water in your sink, cook it on the stove, clean your mold, and put it in. You're ready to go. Uh, but here's an additional step that I put in when I remake. When you shoot the ballistic block, you, um, you lose a little bit of gel. Now you can never really determine how much that is unless you weigh it before and after to determine how much you lose. I'm not going to go through that much trouble. So what I do is I simply add two additional ounces every time I shoot one. So the idea, cold water, least amount of water as you need. You pour in a little bit of water, and then you pour in the two ounces of gel. Now you want to do this after you clean, clean, your, um, clean your used block. You, you clean that first and then I do this second and um, the reason is I use the you gotta bloom new gel every time you do this you gotta bloom new gel but it's not necessary to bloom gel that's already been bloomed because that process is kind of a one time deal so I use this time to let this bloom while I melt down my gel that way when my gel is completely back to a liquid I know that that's given this enough time because of its uh, uh, mount that it's gonna it's gonna bloom. So basically, get it mixed up good here. All right. Basically, it looks like a a cream of wheat. Oh, there's a little bit more right there. Let's add just a little bit more water. The reason I say use as uh, least amount of water as you can is because you don't want to over. I won't put too much water in because then if your if your mixture now it's going to be a little low on water too. But you don't really know how much at this point. So you kind of got to wait until you pour it in your mold to decide how much water to add. And I'm going to show you that too. You can actually add water at the very end to fill your mold. But because the gel consists of the gel amount. I got a clump there, no problem. All right, so it looks like kind of like cream of wheat. You're just going to let that sit, let it bloom, get it all off the spoon. 
So we're going to set that aside and let it be. Now over here, you're going to fill your sink the hottest water you can get. Then you set your pan down in the hot water, let your sink fill up. Now you may have to do this a couple of times until it becomes all a liquid. I highly recommend, now I've done this both ways, but I highly recommend you let it get to a complete liquid here before you go to the stove. The reason I say that is if you have a glob of this floating, well it's actually not going to float, it's going to be more towards the bottom. If you put it on the stove, it's a solid. It's going to take longer to heat up and melt down. So it's actually going to burn the bottom layer before it completely melts. The burn is not good. Matter of fact, this block right here, I got really impatient the first time I made it and actually burned it. These flakes in here are actually burned particles that were in the pan. And I don't want to cut them out because it's part of the gel and I don't want to lose the consistency. So I'm trying to keep it as close to the original recipe as I can. We do that by uh, water content and then adding a small amount of gel to it. Now, like I said, you can't really determine exactly how much you lose, so you got to uh, kind of use common sense. You know, you, you know when you shoot it about how much you lose when you bring it back to the house. So that's all I do. But anyway, um, I'm going to cut it here to save time. I'm going to go ahead and get this melted and. Um, and then we'll uh, get back here when we add uh, add the additional additional gel and when we start to cook it. At this point too, it'd be a really good time to go ahead and clean your mold. As you can see, it leaves a lot of uh, nasty residue between the oil and the gel. You got to get that all cleaned out and dry before you can pour the pour the new gel in. So this would be a good point to go ahead and do this. We'll see you back here in a minute. Okay, here we are. We got our own. Our, we got our gel melted back down to a liquid. We have our bloomed additional gel. As you can tell, it looks like jello now rather than grits or cream of wheat. So now we're going to add this. And all you do is you kind of just break it up in small pieces and just drop it in there. Um, now it's, it's going to melt. I mean, it's a solid right now, but we're fixing to cook it. There's a clump. Not a big deal. Don't worry about that. Uh, matter of fact, in my experience in doing this, clumps are not really much of an issue at all. Um, the main thing is always when you're adding, use cold water. Um, but the clumps really aren't an issue because when you cook it, they... they as they heat up, they come apart, so it's not really a big deal. Got a little bit of clumping going on here. I didn't add enough water initially um, before I mixed it, so it clumped up immediately. But uh, like I said, that's not really a problem. Um, so now what we're going to do is go ahead and move it over to the stove. I can tell that I, at this point, I can tell immediately I'm, I'm low on water. Not an issue at all. Um, I'll show you the trick to that. Uh, so let's move on over to the stove. Okay, uh, we're here to stove. Um, now obviously your stove may be different than mine, but uh, you want to do low heat on mine. I got it at four. You want to bring it up real slow. Um, you don't want it to burn. That's the main reason. If you get it too hot, it's going to get hotter on the bottom for it. And you got to have the right burner. I just noticed I turned on the front burner, so we're going to we're going to fix that, put on the right burner. It's a good thing I didn't touch that. I got real close to it. Um, almost touched it with my arm. Um, they got handy little pictures on there for people like me that uh, need a little extra assistance in that area. But um, anyway, so you want to bring it up real slow. Um, got it on. I'm going to go ahead and put it on four. Typically, I have it on three. Real slow process bringing it up, but I'm going to pay extra careful attention to it. And uh, it's still going to come up pretty slow, but I'm going to pay more attention to it than I normally would. You want to make sure you stir it quite often. Um, you just want to come over here and stir it every few, you know, a couple of minutes. Keep an eye on the temperature. 
Never want it to go over 130. Um, now with the recook, you don't have to get it as hot. Basically, you just want to make sure it's all melted. And I don't know, 110. You know, you just want to get it, you know, warm enough. But um, there's no specified range at that point. Um, just the main thing: make sure you don't have any clumps and you don't have uh, any burning going on. So you just want to constantly stir. Uh, at this point, you could go ahead and go ahead and uh, re-lubricate your mold. Uh, this time we're getting away from the butter pan. Uh, we're going to use this uh, extra uh, virgin olive oil. Uh, my wife is making an angry face behind the camera right now. Oh, a little too much right there, but that's okay. Basically what you want to do, same process, you just get it in there and just, just wipe it around everywhere. Try to get the excess. If you do what I just did and pour it in a whole bunch, um, I didn't realize that was the uh, easy pour model. Uh, so go ahead and make sure all the surfaces are coated real good. Real easy. Now this this oil is going to mix with the with the gel. There's no way of getting around that. Um, but it still prevents it from sticking in the mold. It still sticks a little bit, but not to the extent it would if you just poured it in there. All right, there we go. That's a good and lubed up mold there. Throw that in the trash. I'll go ahead and stir this again. All right, a couple of pointers, tips. Um, be patient. Be very patient. This is a time-consuming project, but it's definitely worth your time. When you shoot your ballistic gel and you get the results and you, you can see the mushroom and it, it's just really rewarding to know that you captured that bullet. You fired that, you know, you shoot, you know, 308s, 338s, you're talking 2,900 feet per second and you're catching it. And then at that point you can see what that bullet's doing. So it's, it's real rewarding. It's worth the time. I, we really enjoy doing it. We enjoy shooting them. It's a lot of, it's a lot of fun. So um, be patient. Take your time. Follow the direction, and uh, and just take your time. It's definitely worth it. Secondly, a lot of people will tell you that you cannot reuse ballistic gelatin. That it's a one-time use. I'm here to prove to you that that is not true. Our ballistic gel that we have right now, I have about sixty dollars invested in all my blocks, and. Uh, that's not a whole lot compared to, to the professional, you know, the ordnance gel or the synthetic gels. But it's still quite a bit of money for something you're just going to shoot and throw away. So, this is saving money. I've used these. This is the fourth time I've used this block. Something to think about with gel. What is the gel? It's a byproduct from, uh, from bone, uh, muscle tissue, uh, from, from the uh, cattle that, you know, the meat processing. So it's not, um, it's not a viable product necessarily. But on the second hand, gel only has two, two consistencies, a liquid and a solid. It doesn't, it doesn't ruin, it doesn't go bad, it doesn't change. You can either heat it up and make it a liquid, or let it cool off and it'll become a solid. It keeps its it keeps its uh, density minus when you shoot it, you lose a little bit. That's why you add a little bit. Um, so anybody that tell you that you can't use it, they're wrong. Now, if you were using this for professional uh, for a professional reason, you know, to you know a criminal investigation or something like that, then yeah, you wouldn't want to reuse it because the it, each time you cook it, it's going to change a little bit, but not to the extent that it's unusable. Just you couldn't, you know, in a court of law, you probably couldn't use it to um, convict somebody on ballistic testing um, in a criminal case. But I'm no expert in that. I'm just saying that in a in a in a legal legal manner, no, you cannot reuse it. But for outback fun, yeah, you can reuse it until the gel just disintegrates. So far, this will be fourth time. I don't see that happening because the gel don't change. But anyway, uh, we're gonna go ahead and uh, we're gonna go ahead and uh, sign off at this point. It's, uh, process the same. You pour it out of here into your mold. Let it cool on the counter. Once it's uh, 
the temperature goes down enough, you know, it's not steaming hot, then you can go ahead and throw it in your fridge. Uh, at least allow 24 hours at this uh, size to cure, and you're ready to shoot again. Thanks for watching. Hope this was helpful. Come back and see us again in Bar 20 Hours.